I say might have took a trip to here you go, New Bern, North Carolina. <laughs> hey yo! <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Mike Trone of Trone Zone Fishing. I'd like to welcome the new viewers to the channel and thank those who have returned. We're doing something a little bit different today. My father and I took a trip down to New Bern, North Carolina to visit my uncle and he's taking us out on his boat. The goals for today include catching some panfish to release into the Grease and the Trent River and then taking a quick run to the Noose River to attempt to catch some saltwater fish. And we also have a $10 big fish for the day bet going on. As far as the gear goes for the panfish, I'm using 7 foot medium light rods, 2,000 size reels spooled with 6 pound test fluorocarbon line. And since this water is new to me, I'm going to be using lures that I have confidence in. Uh, the first one is my trusty orange inline spinner. And the second one is my yellow perch original Rapala floating minnow. My father is also using inline spinners on his ultralight rod and reel spooled with four pound test monofilament line. Yes, you heard me correctly, monofilament. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Six pound test fluorocarbon line. My dad using four pound test yep. mono. Yes. Who still uses mono? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> he got that spool for one dollar and thirty six cents. <laughs> Leave a comment below and let me know if you still use monofilament line. All right, let's see what we can catch out there. Thanks for watching and enjoy. I actually started off with the gulp minnow, and I think this is the only fish that I caught on it, so I switched up pretty quick. Bluegill. Huh. Okay. What color bluegill is that? I don't know. It's pretty though. <laughs> and it's like pan sized almost. <laughs> <laughs> As far as the retrieve goes with the inline spinner, it's super simple. Just cast it out and reel it back in. Perch. Perch. Mark the spot. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What is happening over here? <laughs> Did 
He's kind of swimming toward me, Mark. You got one? He's swimming toward me. All right. Is he? No birch. Okay. Get the birch. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, I'm not putting him back. Spot. No, the yalla perch. Yalla. Mark it. Mark the spot, bro. Helping you out here, remember? <laughs> and he hit it, you know, pretty close to the boat. Oh, he did? Mm hmm. He put some water in that live well now. Yeah. Right? I plugged it up. That's plugged up. Alright, there's a, there's a, there's a, a valve on the knob. When the water comes out, you gotta turn that. Fish just broke right here. Largey. Maybe the blue fox? No. Hit Mr. Rapala. Oh. Skinny. Alright guys, we only got an hour. And then try to put some time in with those blue fish or when retrieving the Rapala floating minnow, I give it about three twitches and it goes down about a foot and a half or so and it floats slowly back up to the top. Uh, usually fish will hit it when it comes back up on top, but sometimes they'll hit it when it's suspended coming back mm -hmm. up. Mm. No. It's a yellow perch. Oh, sh. That's jumbo. All right, so we're about to take a quick 10 minute boat ride to the Noose River where the water has more salinity, more salt, and see if we can catch some other species of fish. Uh, we rode up on this trussel and the mullet were jumping out of the water everywhere. So we decided to put some Z-Man paddle tails on and go at it. So far, there's no clear cut winner for the no big fish of the everywhere. day, but all that is about to change shortly. I'm surprised any of them ever jump in the boat. No. Today is gonna be the day. I'd like to give a shout out to Mark Daniels Jr. who I follow on YouTube. He's a professional bass fisherman. He actually had a video where he showed me how to properly put on a Z-Man bait. You really want to grab that rubber and try to pull it above the jig head and it snaps right on there. Hey Mike, I'll show you how to do that. There you go. Daniels did it. There you go. There you go. What is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. All right, let's go. I got ten dollars. <laughs> oh, that's why you wanted to come on here. <laughs> Good deal. 
When it comes to the retrieve of the uh, Z-Man paddle tail, all we're doing is letting it sing for like two seconds and then reeling it back in steadily and the bluefish are just annihilating it. beat him down. You hit it like three times on that cast. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, so far, my dad's winning big fish of the day with his bluefish. But my uncle hooks into something massive here. And uh, if he gets it, it's going to be the winner. Uh huh? That thing jumped. I don't know. I sort of explored. Oh, that was a jump? Nice. 
tag him. I don't want to think he ripped out some drag. That's for sure. Can you see what it is, Mike? My dad thought this fish was a shark. I thought it was a striped bass, and my uncle thought it was a cow nose ray. Turns out we were all wrong. Oh, he snagged him in the tail? Yeah. The biggest fish. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest fish. Spotted gar? Huh? Spotted gar. I thought it was a striper when I saw it come up. Let me just unhook it. So this fish was not hooked in the mouth, snagged in the back, and didn't even make it in the boat. What do you guys think? I mean, he did touch the leader, but does that really qualify as the biggest fish? I mean, we gave it to him anyway because he's such a nice captain. But anyway, let's go uh, clean up some fish and fry some up. Before we clean these fish, I would like to give a huge shout out to my uncle's friends who are now our friends, Pete and Joey. They caught these speckled trout and slot redfish for us to eat and take home with us. Their southern hospitality is truly amazing. And uh, you will be seeing Pete in an upcoming episode where we take a charter out of Moorhead City and absolutely crush them. And uh, thanks again, guys. All right, so my dad's here about to fillet up these panfish that we caught for our fish fry tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Got some nice bluegills and yellow perch. Not everyone's going to be able to eat, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> no secret, big guy. Let's go down the backbone. Over the belly bone. Like so. Don't go across to me, just pull it off. Pull off the skin. And here we go. Did you notice I didn't turn touch any internal organs? Uh -huh. And how's that? Look at that monster. Right. Oh man, this guy. This guy is tough. That's a nice yellow perch. Sure is. See so you going right down the backbone? Right down the backbone. Right close to the rib cage. Went all the way through. I'm gonna pull the skin across the belly bone. Otherwise. No muss, no fuss with that. Now when you're skinning, you just want to pull the skin, right? That's correct. You want to work it back and forth. A serrated knife to cut through these tough scales and skin and perch. But I'm just using a regular Dexter knife today. I'm pushing the knife through, not sewing. Be a nice even fillet like that. Oh, yeah. She's pulling the meat right off the belly bone. Off the rib cage. Yeah, off the, yeah, off the rib cage. Pulling the meat right across the rib cage. See that? He's mm -hmm. not trying to fillet over it, he's just no. pulling the meat right off the rib cage. Correct. And it's okay to leave the fish in for one or two days prior to filleting. You don't have to fillet fish right away. Just keep them cold, right? Keep them cold, keep them on ice. This one may be a little tricky for a smaller guy. Let's see what I can do.
Thanks, Big Mike said he's extra, extra sharp knives he has. Yes, thanks, Mike, for the knives. Look at that. Wow. That's like a scalpel. Ooh. Very slimy, slippery. I have gloves on too. So, and these fish are going to be for a fish fry. Yeah. All right, so here's the fish mix. It's going to be half cracker meal, half cornmeal, and any seasonings that you like yourself. We're going to go vegetable oil today, and uh, we're going to do a little egg wash on them. All right, so here's the yellow perch and the blue dill fillets. We're just going to put them in the uh, egg wash for a few minutes. And then we're going to put them in our breading. And then we're going to put them in the fryer. So while I'm breading these fish, my uncle has the oil outside cranking up to 375 degrees. It's going to be nice and hot. When these fish go in, they're only going to take about two minutes to complete. Uh, these are really thin fish and they cook really fast. You really don't want to overcook your fish. That's what gives it the fishy taste. Uh, we're just going to hit it with some sea salt as soon as it comes out. And my uncle is making some cheese grits to go with it. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the video. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, we got some cheese grits. Bluegill. Yellow perch. Another yellow perch. Some hot sauce. Look at that meat. Perfect. Mm. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs>